Namaskar, dear colleagues. Welcome to the fourth day of the NEP 2020 PDP. As you all know, NEP basically focuses on the five pillars that is affordability, accessibility, quality, equity, and, and accountability for uh, ensuring continual learning. We have been at Indira Gandhi National Open University. We are conducting these sessions to enable our fellow colleagues to understand what this NEP 2020 envisages. Today we have with us Dr. Srikant Mahapatra, Pro Vice Chancellor, Indira Gandhi National Open University. He is not, he doesn't need much of an introduction because anybody who is, uh, knows uh, about, uh, will definitely know about him in the academic fraternity. He has been a director, RSD, that is Regional Services Division and director EMPC. So the, today he is going to actually talk on skilling and uh, NEP 2020, skilling and employability, which he would be very able to explain to all of you because of his vast experience. Uh, any questions, anything which we would be asking in uh, after the, uh, he would have spoken on it and then we will continue with the session. Sir. Thank you, Madam. Uh, dear colleagues, today we are discussing about the basic features of the National Education Policy 2020 and particularly our emphasis will be on skill-based education. As you all know that the National Education Policy 2020 aims at making India a knowledge superpower. It will promote knowledge economy in the 21st century. It will support the broad mission of Government of India, that is Digital India, Skill India and Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Now, in that context, we will be discussing about the features of the National Education Policy 2020, which wants to increase the gross enrollment ratio in higher education from the current 27% to 50% by the year 2035. The policy gives emphasis on as Madam has just now told, on access, equity, inclusion, affordability, flexibility, autonomy, holistic, multidisciplinary education, skill-based education, value-based education, and to integrate school education with higher education, to integrate vocational education with higher education, and to ensure the employability of the students who are passing out from the universities and colleges. The policy says that till date, our higher education system is working in silos as separate entities. We have regular universities, we have technical universities, we have health universities, law universities, distance education, more open universities, we have private universities, public universities. So universities across the country are known in different names. But the national education policy says that there is only one higher educational institution and that higher educational institution is meant for holistic, multidisciplinary, skill-based, value-based education to be provided across disciplines through face-to-face -face mode, regular mode and distance education mode. 
The policy also talks about structural reforms in higher education. And by structural reforms, we mean that there will be a higher education council of India. And under the higher education council of India, we'll have a national higher education regulatory council. We will have a national accreditation council. Then there will be a general education council and a higher education funding council. So a lot of structural changes are also suggested in the National Education Policy 2020. It also talks about a four-year undergraduate degree program instead of a three-year degree program. And the four-year degree program will be either research-based or it will be an honors degree. And when it will be a four-year degree program, it also suggests a one-year master degree program. If it is a three years bachelor's degree program, then two years master degree program. But at the same time, the policy says that the national higher education qualification framework will be aligned with the national skill qualification framework. So my emphasis today for the next 20, 25 minutes will be on skill-based education and how the skill-based education will lead to employability for the youth of this country. We all know the policy also reiterates that 21st century skills that is communication skills, problem solving skills, decision making skills, analytical skills, etc. are as important as the domain knowledge for the students to make them employable. The policy, national education policy tells us that there are many jobs which are unskilled which will be taken over by the machine in the 21st century because of the progress that we have made in artificial intelligence, in machine learning, in data science, in internet of things, in robotics, etc. So therefore a word of caution has been given by the national education policy that since machine will take over the unskilled work, we need to have skilled workforce in this country. And how to have the skilled workforce in this country? What is the present scenario of skill education in the country? The present scenario is not very encouraging because vocational education has not been mainstreamed in India. Vocational education and school education Vocational education and higher education are running as parallel. And there is no scope for upward mobility or vertical mobility from vocational education to higher education. Therefore, the national education policy says that vocational education is to be integrated with skill education. Skill education is to be integrated with higher education. And these are essential for seamless movement of our learners from one stream to the other stream. And keeping that in mind, the national education policy says that by 2025, which is not very far off, by 2025, 50% of the students in school education as well as in higher education should have exposure to vocational education. And it says, that from the middle school level up to the secondary school level, the students or the learners will have exposure to vocational education. And vocational education, like physical education, art and crafts, along with science, mathematics, social science, language, will become part of the secondary education in this country at the secondary level. And when they come to the higher education, the higher education will become holistic, 
multidisciplinary, skill-based and value-based. That means skill education will become an integral part of higher education. It will not run as a separate structure in higher education. It will become a part of the higher education in the entire higher education ecosystem of the country. And for integrating skill education with higher education, the National Skill Credit Framework, NSQF, will play an important role. And so also, the Na National Higher Education Skill Framework will play an important role because the National Higher Education Skill Framework will be aligned with the National Skill Education Framework, NSQF. And then only, the students will have movement from one stream to the other stream. Now, keeping all these things in mind, the national education policy says that there will be a national credit framework. And that credit framework will help in integrating skill education with school education. That is, skilling and schooling will go simultaneously. And skill education, school education will be integrated with higher education. So a national credit framework is the need of the hour. And it starts from class 5. That means level 1 of the national credit framework will start from class 5. By the time the student will go to class 8, they will be in level 2. Class 10 will be level 3. Class 12 will be level 4. So that means 1 to 12 will be the period of schooling. And within these 12 years, the students will be crossing four levels of learning. And then from 12 onwards, it will be called as higher education. So 4.5, if 12 is 4, level 4, then 4.5 will be undergraduate certificate program. 5 will be undergraduate diploma program. 5.5 will be 3 years undergraduate degree program. 6 will be 4 year undergraduate program. Similarly, 6.5 will become the first year of the master degree program or the second year of the master degree program if it is a 3 years program. Bachelor's degree 3 years, then 6.5 will become a master degree program of two years and by the time you reach level eight it will be a phd program and level seven will be mtech and msc program and other professional programs so from level one to level eight an attempt has been made to integrate skill education to integrate school education with the higher education system of this country and when we come up to higher education, the credits will be valued in terms of hours. That is, one credit will be 30 study hours. And in one semester of six months duration, one has to earn 20 credits. In one year, the student will be earning 40 credits. For a three years bachelor degree program, 40 credits means 1,200 hours per year. And in three years, it has to be 3,600 hours. So a scientific method has been thought of for integrating technical education with general education, for integrating skill education with higher education, and integrating school education and vocational education with higher education in this country. This is the contribution of the national education policy 2020 uh, before us. So keeping all these things in mind, we have to have industry relationship. Recently, you must be aware that UGC, University Grants Commission, has proposed for a new scheme called the Professors of Practice. Now, what is that Professor of Practice? Professor of Practice should not be the general professors of the universities assistant professor or associate professor or professors. Professor of practice will be those people who have the skills, the requisite experience, the industry exposure, 
to join the higher education mainstream so that they will be able to align our higher education system with the industrial requirements. As in today, in the year 2022, there is a study which says that more than 100 million skilled workforce are required in vital sectors of our economy, which is not happening. So unless skill is integrated into our higher education curriculum, it will be very difficult for us uh, uh, to make our students employable. So, dear colleagues, keeping all these things in mind, it is proposed that to make India the skill capital of the world, we have to have skilled workforce. And to have skilled workforce, it is very essential that skill education becomes a integral part of the higher education, skill education becomes an integral part of the school education in uh, our country. Then only the India will be able to have the requisite number, though we have the highest number of youth in the world in terms of workforce, but what is lacking in India is skill education and what is lacking in India is skill workforce. So keeping that in mind also, the University Grants Commission has recently come out with a new scheme called apprenticeship. Apprenticeship training for our learners. And apprenticeship training scheme has already been introduced by the All India Council of Technical Education. And apprenticeship guidelines have also been formulated by the University Grants Commission where they want that apprenticeship training, field training, industry exposure will become a part and parcel of our higher education system if the students are to get a degree. And the General Education Council, which is one of the verticals of the four verticals that I have just referred to, has been given the responsibility to identify the learning outcome of each program or the graduate attributes. And these learning outcomes will definitely give not only equal emphasis on the general knowledge or the domain knowledge, but it will also give equal importance to the skill education and ensure that the skill education is aligned with the national skill qualification framework. The National Skill Qualification Framework will define the Indian standard occupations. And these Indian standard occupations will also be aligned with the international occupational standards designed and developed by the International Labor Organization. So what the National Education Policy aims at is not only making India the skill capital, but aligning our skill education with the international standard. So starting from the school to the higher education system, the policy talks about skilling and schooling, skilling and university education system. Now I'll tell you some of the things that we have done as far as the implementation of the uh, skill framework is concerned. Friends, we have almost 15,000 industrial training institutes in the country. But these industrial training institutes are providing vocational education to the students. And our school education has got nothing to do with the vocational education provided because school education is guided by one ministry and the vocational education is guided by the other ministry. The national education policy says that since school education is to be integrated with vocational education, so general college school should also get the benefit of the vocational training provided by the ITIs or the Pradhan Mantri Kausal Kendras or the Pradhan Mantri Kausal Vikas Kendras which are available across the country. Therefore, it is essential that our schooling system which provides general school education needs to be aligned with the, uh, with the vocational training provided by the industrial training institutes. So it will be a win-win situation for both of them. 
if the school is integrated with the vocational education provided by the ITIs, then ITIs infrastructural facilities will also be utilized by the general uh, schooling system and at the same time the national education policy also says that we'll have skill labs which will be established in a hub and spoke model that means it is not necessary that each school will have a skill lab you can have a skill lab for a cluster of schools and all these schools will have access to the skill lab so the imagine a situation where the ITIs are identified as the skill labs for a cluster of schools you need not have to establish even skill labs in general schools and similar is the pattern that can be implemented in higher educational system there can be a cluster of colleges for whom a skill lab can be established and one of the prominent engineering colleges either in the government sector or in the private sector can be identified as the skill lab for a cluster of colleges because the policy one thing that is given emphasis in the policy is integration it talks about integrating everything because everything is now running parallel so we are not getting the benefit of the school if the school education is providing general education then vocational education is provided by other institutions and there is no link between the two therefore seamless movement of the students from one institution to the other institution or one stream to the other stream is being affected so keeping those things in mind the national education policy uh, talks about integrating a holistic and developing a holistic multidisciplinary higher education system in this country where general education will be given emphasis at the same time skill education will be given emphasis and skill education need not and does not necessarily mean that only skill it is also 21st century skills which are very essential or the soft skills or the life skills which are very essential the problem solving skills the digital literacy skills the the communication skills the problem solving skill the time management skill the managerial skills the leadership skills these are the need of the hour if you want to integrate education 4.0 with the industry 4.0 and to take leverage or advantage of the high end disruptive technology which i have just narrated about the progress made in artificial intelligence machine learning internet of things data science robotics uh, and uh, similar kind of uh, technological advancement which are coming from the industry if they are integrated with education then we will be able to develop a true skilled workforce in this country which will lead india to 21st century which will ensure that india has become a knowledge economy and india has really progressed as a knowledge society or a knowledge superpower in the world so i think that uh, skill is as important as general education that is the major highlight of the national education policy 2020 so we will now invite questions uh, from the participants and see uh, if you have any queries kindly feel free to put your question in the chat box and one by one we will try to answer uh, those questions Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Mahapatra, for giving such a lucid uh, information and lecture. And I think it becomes very easy for us to understand what skilling and employability, what does NEP 2020 actually give us. Uh, before we start with the question and answers, uh, there is an announcement that after this live session, which gets over uh, at 4, our participating fellow teachers can view video recordings of the experts, Professor Pankaj Mittal and Professor Satyakam at 4.15 p.m. on the same channel and same link. Just for convenience, I'll repeat it once again. Abhi jo hamara live telecast ho raha hai, iske turant baad sawa baje, 
हमारे जो टीचर्स जो पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे हैं इस सेशन में वो वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग्स एक्सपर्ट्स प्रोफेसर पंकज मित्तल और प्रोफेसर सत्य काम की 4:15 पे इसी चैनल पे इसी लिंक पे देख पाएंगे एंड कमिंग बैक टू डॉक्टर महापात्रा सेशन जस्ट नाउ आई थिंक वी ऑल रियलाइज दैट वॉट एन ई पी एक्चुअली गिव्स अस इज अ is a is a framework which the country uh, should be following because kahin na kahin thoda thoda hum sab is uh, nep 2020 ke kuch khandon ko zarur apne pathyakram mein la rahe the chahe wo skilling ho chahe wo vocational ho chahe multidisciplinarity ho par sab alag alag tarike se la rahe the what nep 2020 provides us is a a uh, framework which if we all follow would be uh, very beneficial for the coming generation a very important point which has been just now told by dr mahapatra is about the uh, facilitating our students our learners for skilling there will be a skilling lab and vocational institutes are already there but then everybody is very independent and they are not uh, आई नॉट से दे डोंट एंटरटेन बट नेवरदिलेस इट इज उसी के लिए होता है जो वहाँ एडमिशन होता है बट एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी के तहत अगर हम सब मिल के एकजुट हो के इसको करें तो हमारे लर्नर्स को बहुत फ़ायदा होने वाला है हमारे स्टूडेंट्स बहुत इसमें फ़ायदा करेंगे और वही नहीं हम टीचर्स भी एक्चुअली जब क्योंकि ये तो सच है कि हम बच्चों को पढ़ाते ज़रूर हैं पर उनसे भी हम भी सीखते हैं तो जब वो दूसरे इंस्टीट्यूट से दूसरे लैब से पढ़ के आएंगे समझ के आएंगे तो वो जब अपनी नॉलेज अपनी इन्फॉर्मेशन हमें बताएंगे तो हमको भी उससे बहुत फ़ायदा होगा हमें भी समझ में आएगा स्किल कोर्सेज स्किलिंग जो है उसे हम सब थोड़ा थोड़ा वी ऑल आर फेमिलियर विद थैंक्स टू चॉइस बेड क्रेडिट सिस्टम विच वॉज इम्प्लीमेंटेड अंडर द गाइडलाइंस ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांड्स कमीशन उसमें सब कॉलेजेस ने आई एम क्वाइट श्योर मस्ट हैव बीन ऑफरिंग कोर्सेज टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स अबाउट द स्किल एनहेंसमेंट कोर्सेज इसी को एक बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल देते हुए इस एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में लाया गया है क्योंकि हमको एम्प्लॉयबिलिटी भी बहुत ज़रूरी है देखना और हर किसी के लिए किसी कारणवश पॉसिबल नहीं हो पाता है कि वो अपनी पूरी पढ़ाई कर पाए तो अगर हम इन सब चीज़ों को सही तरीके से एक बहुत सोच समझ के करें तो आई थिंक इम्प्लीमेंटिंग एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी मे नॉट बी दैट डिफ़िकल्ट ऑफकोर्स इट्स अ वेरी चैलेंजिंग जॉब क्योंकि इसका बहुत बड़ा होराइजन है जिसको हमको इकट्ठा करना पड़ेगा सो थैंक यू डॉक्टर महापात्रा फॉर गिविंग सच अ नाइस सच इन्फॉर्मेशन विच इज़ एक्चुअली यूजफुल फॉर आई एम श्योर ऑल द टीचर्स हु आर लिसनिंग टू इट वी हैव क्वाइट अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन नाउ एक बहुत अच्छा है सर वन ऑफ दम क्वेश्चन हाउ टू रजिस्टर फॉर एन ई पी पी टी पी आई थिंक यू आर ऑलरेडी रजिस्टर्ड फॉर एन ई पी पी टी पी देर फॉर यू आर इन दिस चैनल बट आई टेल यू दैट दिस एन ई पी पी डी पी लिंक इज अवेलेबल एंड यू कैन कॉन्टैक्ट आवर रीजनल सेंटर्स द रीजनल डायरेक्टर्स and the other academic staff of all our 57 regional centers across the country are vigorously giving advertisement in social media platforms in youtube platforms their websites are also having this link their social media platforms like youtube facebook are also having this link so i request you to go to the website of the regional center of igno and uh, you will easily get the link for registration in the nep national education policy hyphen professional development program uh, 2020 which is a ugc sponsored professional development program so can i will just add that we'll have it in stages because we have lot of teachers who would be registering for it to so, iska hum हर थोड़े दिन में वी विल स्टार्ट अगेन अभी जैसे कुछ का हमने अबाउट मोर देन सिक्स थाउजेंड टीचर्स को लिया है इसके बाद नेक्स्ट सेशन में भी करेंगे आपने 
I'm quite confident. Actually, you have done it, but kindly spread. The link is open, madam. Uh, the, the link, link is, is open. open. So uh, anybody can join any time. Yes. And we'll take uh, the uh, registered uh, participants in batches. Okay. Uh, when and how we will get the test sessions? See, the test sessions will start. Uh, it is totally a six days program. You can extend it up to nine days. But after the fourth day, the access to the uh, test will start. There are two components in the test. One is the formative testing, that is the comprehensive assessment, which carries 30% weightage, and the uh, final uh, test, which carries 70% weightage. And access to this assessment portal will be available to you uh, from the fourth day onwards of the date of commencement of this program and it will be over by 17th right yeah yeah uh, how do you assess study material and course material for pdp nep see the pdp uh, nep program has four modules and these four modules are text modules digital text modules uh, consisting of 14 uh, units these are all available in the portal. In those who are registered for this program will have free access to these modules. And other than the 14 uh, units, which are in four modules, you will have access to 30 videos. And all these videos are prepared on different aspects of NAP uh, 2020. So these are also accessible to those along with the text material. Videos are also accessible to those who are registered in this portal uh, of the SWAM and uh, who are participating. If I may just add, it is uh, it will be very nice if you all also uh, visit our site and see this, these 30 videos because they have been uh, prepared with, uh, with the help of the experts in the field. And uh, uh, they are also available bilingually, not all of them, but some of them are uh, there bilingually. So do see, uh, watch those videos. It would really help you enhance the text uh, material. Text material is available in Hindi, mein hai. Hai, but yes. videos are available in English. Mein hai. So, but text material are available in both English medium as well as in Hindi medium. Ek yeh, actually, the next question is this. कि मैं प्रतिदिन लाइव सेशन जॉइन कर रहा हूं सभी वीडियोस अंग्रेजी में हैं जी इसीलिए हम जो लाइव सेशन है उसको आ, अभी जो फोर्थ दिस इज द फोर्थ लाइव सेशन इससे पहले जो लाइव सेशन है उसको हमने हिंदी में किया है बट टुडे सेशन इज इन हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश मैडम इज स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी आई एम मोर कंफर्टेबल इन इंग्लिश बिकॉज़ Hindi may be bol sakta hu, but if you have a Hindi may aega, then we will give Hindi may be jawaab denge. So, in ka actually prashna is, samajhne mein adhik samay lag raha hai, kya mein Hindi mein joh ikai di gai hai, unko padh kar dono test paar sakta hu? Bilkul, aap pass kar sakte hai, because joh test hai, o test ka question bhi bilingual hai, Hindi mein bhi hai, Angreji mein bhi hai, so aap ko joh achha lagay, aap us mein aapna answer de sakte hai, either अंग्रेजी में दे सकते हैं या हिंदी में दे सकते हैं। सर वैसे तो आप इस प्रश्न का उत्तर दे चुके हैं, but for the benefit of our fellow colleagues, एक बार मैं फिर से बोल देती हूँ, from where do they, we download modules of NEP PDP? NEP PDP का modules हमारे स्वयं पोर्टल में उपलब्ध है, और ये उनके लिए उपलब्ध है। जो इस कोर्स में रजिस्टर किए हैं, because all of you know that ये जो कोर्स आम कर रहे हैं, ये नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 का आगरनेस के लिए कर रहे हैं। So this is meant for teachers जो higher educational institution में पढ़ा रहे हैं। So therefore only the teachers are getting registered in the Swayam platform and all these materials in the text form. Both in English and Hindi are available for them. इसको आप देख लेंगे ये दोनों भाषाओं में हैं हिंदी में भी है अंग्रेजी में भी है और जिसमें आप comfortable महसूस करें उसमें आप इसको 
एक्सेस करके देख सकते हैं अनादर क्वेश्चन इज सर आई एम अनएबल टू गेट द एग्जाम लिंक प्लीज ईमेल मी जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि एग्जाम लिंक आपको दे दिया जाएगा जो इसमें रजिस्टर्ड हैं उनको एग्जाम लिंक फोर्थ डे ऑनवर्ड्स अवेलेबल होगा सो so, अगर आप इसमें रजिस्टर्ड हैं एन ई प्रोग्राम में और आप एक टीचर हैं तो जरूर आपको लिंक फोर्थ डे ऑनवर्ड्स लिंक आपको उपलब्ध हो जाएगा एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन है सर देर इज एन ऑप्शन ऑफ मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच फॉर लर्नर्स इन एन बट इफ द टीचर्स नाउ वॉन्ट टू गो फॉर टीचिंग ऑफ मल्टीपल डिसिप्लिन वॉट आर द प्रोविजन फॉर इट कैन अ टीचर स्टार्ट न्यू स्पेशलाइजेशन एंड विल द एम्प्लॉयर अलाउ सच स्टडी अ फ्रेश सी वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच फर्स्ट मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच डज नॉट नेसेसरिली मीन दैट ए टीचर विल बी वेल वर्स्ड विथ मल्टीपल डिसिप्लिन बट वट द नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एंड दिस सजेस इज दैट ए स्टूडेंट विल हैव एक्सपोजर टू डिफरेंट डिसिप्लिन आर्लियर वट वॉज हैपनिंग इज दैट इफ यू आर ए आर्ट स्टूडेंट यू आर ओनली getting exposed to subjects like political science history sociology public administration economics etc and if you are a science student you are getting exposure to physics chemistry mathematics or geography or geology uh, etc but the policy says that we will have a integration of stem courses stem means science technology mathematics engineering along with social science humanities physical education etc etc and it also should include skill education then only it will truly become multidisciplinary it will cut across boundaries of different disciplines and streams it will not simply cross the disciplinary boundary but it will also cross the boundary of a stream stream in science stream art stream commerce stream so beyond the stream beyond the discipline what you are studying is called multidisciplinary now how this multidisciplinary education will be provided therefore it talks about an integrated approach integrated approach means that today all these institutions are working in silos if you are studying in a engineering college you don't have access to much of social science if you are studying social science you don't have access to much of science or much of the technical knowledge and education so therefore what is being envisaged is multidisciplinary higher education which is holistic multidisciplinary means cutting across stream cutting across boundaries of disciplines and institutions will have provide access to this education by having different departments by having different disciplines then only the student will have access to multidisciplinary education i think uh, he has explained it very well aur uh, hum log kai baar dekhte hain kuch colleges hote hain uh, commerce colleges ho jate hain ya arts ke college hote hain ya keval science hi vigyani Uh, अपने विद्यार्थियों को के लिए ऑफर करते हैं पर जैसा कि अपने लेक्चर में सर ने सेशन में बताया था कि इट इज़ आल्सो इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ क्लस्टर ऑफ कॉलेजेस ज़रूरी नहीं है कि आप अभी ही तुरंत ही सारा कुछ आप यहाँ से स्टार्ट हो जाना चाहिए हम दूसरे कॉलेजेस की मदद से हम मिलजुल के अगर करें तो इट इज़ बेसिकली दी मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी अप्रोच टूअर्स स्टडीज़ किसी एक चीज़ में क्योंकि हर किसी का रुझान कहीं ना कहीं होता है पर हम अपनी शिक्षा सिर्फ एक ही किसी भी विषय में करते थे आज हम अपने जो चीज़ हमको जिस विषय की तरफ रुझान है उसको भी हम पढ़ सकते हैं जैसा कि आ, हम आ, अपने डिफरेंट कोर्सेज में अंडर ग्रेजुएट लेवल पे हम ले सकते हैं उसको पढ़ सकते हैं क्योंकि बहुत लोग अपने अपने को जो किसी भी चीज़ में ज़्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन ज़्यादा नॉलेज करने की इच्छा रखते हैं उनके लिए भी इस शिक्षा नीति में एक जगह है तो किसी भी टीचर को मल्टी डिसिप्लिनरी 
करके कोई नया सब्जेक्ट नहीं करना है जैसे कि सर ने डॉक्टर महापात्रा ने अभी बहुत अच्छे से समझाया कि इट इज़ फॉर द लर्नर्स दे कैन परस्यू देर वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू स्टडी right in fact i would like to add here one more thing that the present choice based credit system the national education policy says that it will continue but in a modified form now what is that modification that is being envisaged by the national education policy it envisages a multidisciplinary approach which is presently lacking and i again reiterate by multidisciplinary approach it says cutting across the boundaries of different disciplines and cutting across the boundaries of different streams so that art and craft physical education skill education will be integrated value education will all be integrated into the higher education system and the students will be it will be learner centric it will not be teacher centric and in learner centric educational ecosystem the learner or the student will have the freedom of choice to choose courses from different disciplines from different streams and the scope and mechanism should be there uh, to fulfill uh, that uh, decision or choice of the student to go for multidisciplinary education another question comes how skill component can be integrated into odl and online courses curriculum see it's a very good question how skill education can be integrated to uh online education and odl let me give you uh, some examples uh from indira gandhi national open university we have proposed many such schemes because national education policy says that when you are integrating your skill education with higher education you can adopt different models and the models that we have adopted in igno is we have signed mou with the nch mct national council for tourism and travel management we have signed mou with the cost accountants of india with chartered accountants of india and in all these models what we have done is we have integrated skill education with higher education that means 50% of the courses are provided by the nch mct through their uh, travel and tourism management institutes through the cost accountants of india chartered accountants of india company secretaries of india and 50% of the courses are general education which is provided by indira gandhi national open university this national education policy also talks about credit transfer and it says that credit can be transferred to the an extent of 50% beyond 50% if you are transferring credit then the institution will not be able to give award a degree so degree awarding institution will give 50% uh, of the courses and they will conduct the examination for 50% of the courses so these models of collaboration with the national tourism and travel management institute collaboration with company secretaries collaboration with chartered accountants collaboration with cost accountants of india are all on 50 50 basis recently we have proposed another scheme for the agnibirs which are uh, going to join the indian army indian navy and indian air force there also we have said that skill training imparted by the skill institutes of the armed forces army navy and air force will be given credit weightage up to the extent of 50% and rest of the 50% credits they have to do the courses under the choice based credit system that means out of 120 credits in a 3 years bachelor degree program 60 credits will be odl and online programs and 60 credits will be uh, the skill based programs which the uh, defense establishments are providing but then we are not directly taking the skill programs from the defense establishment and integrating with our own general education we have asked them go to the national council for vocational education and training which is the skill regulator of the country like ugc which is the general 
regulator for general education, AICT, which is the regulator for technical education, NCBT is the regulator for skill education. So we have told them that you align your skill training with the national skill qualification framework at level 4.5 and above, which is for undergraduate certificate, undergraduate diploma 5, and then undergraduate degree 5.5, and then give us those skill training credits and we'll integrate it and give us give the students a bachelor degree so this is the model that open university like igno has adopted for integrating skill education with higher education as far as online education is concerned you know that the university grants commission open and distance learning program and online program regulation 2020 talks about 40% of the MOOCs courses can be integrated with regular education. So this 40% of the MOOCs courses which are available in the SWAM platform can also be given credit weightage by a regular university and by an open university. Therefore, uh, this 40% uh, option has to be integrated with the ODL online programs uh, ODL programs and the general face-to-face -face programs. So it's it's not very difficult that skill education cannot be integrated with higher education. And lastly, I would say that recently, IGNU has established extension centers in 1,000 ITIs, industrial training institutes across the country. And the basic purpose of identifying these 1,000 ITIs is to declare them as the skill hubs of the university. That means our students can use this infrastructure of the ITIs for their skill-based training as and when the curriculum of IGNO will permit. IGNO is also going to sign an MOU with the National Skill Development Corporation where skill components will be embedded into the curriculum of the university programs, academic programs and our students who have joined the academic programs will get the scope for apprenticeship for training in 38 sector skill councils which are established under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship as of now so there are various models through which skill can be skill education can be integrated with higher education as far as odl and open uh, online education are concerned. So I think another question is from somebody very passionate about music. National education policy, kya music subject ko aage la sakti hai? Bilkul national education policy, music, drama, theater, performing art, visual art, ye sab ko saamne laane ka koosis kiya hai aur usko mainstream karne ka bhi koosis kiya hai. So therefore, आपके मन में जो सवाल है कि क्या म्यूजिक को नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 मेनस्ट्रीम कर सकता है बिल्कुल कर सकता है एंड म्यूजिक कैन बी टॉट विद इंजीनियरिंग म्यूजिक कैन बी टॉट विद जनरल एजुकेशन जनरल हायर एजुकेशन म्यूजिक इटसेल्फ इज अ स्किल सो म्यूजिक कैन बी टॉट विद अदर स्किल्स and music can be mainstreamed to the higher education system. It is quite possible and feasible under the National Education Policy 2020. A very uh, important question is uh, there. There are infrastructure differences between rural and urban area colleges. In NEP, how rural area colleges complete with urban, compete with urban area colleges? See, I would like to reiterate what I have said yes. uh, in uh, my previous year, that access and equity and inclusion are the three major terms which have been emphasized open in the National Education Policy 2020. The National Education Policy 2020 also says that students from the remote region, backward region, students belonging to the weaker sections of the society, will be given equal opportunity, will be mainstream. For them, higher educational institutions will make special efforts to attract them to higher education by providing them scholarships, by providing them pre by giving them hostel facilities, 
by by even arranging bridge courses for them if they are lacking in any of these subjects the national education policy also talks about identifying special educational zones across the country where these people belonging to the weaker section people belonging to the remote areas are residing it talks about socially economically disadvantaged groups so special emphasis will be given through the national education policy on sdgcs and at the same time the national education policy gives emphasis that these people who were traditionally been excluded from the mainstream of education will be brought back to the education system so that the gross enrollment ratio which is currently uh, placed at 27.1% will become 50% by the year 2035 so therefore maximum emphasis has been given uh, for this and most importantly the national education policy says that by 2030 each district each district in the country there are 740 or districts in the country each district in the country will have a multidisciplinary higher educational institution they have not talked about a uh, university in each district but it certainly talks about one multidisciplinary higher educational institution in each of the district by 2030 Uh, another question is are the streams like bsc bcom and ba remain same in this policy or there is a common degree for all after four year or three year integrated course right now what we know is a choice based credit system and we say that if it is a general course then it is 132 credits if it is a honors course it is 148 credits the new ugc guidelines talks about a 3 year bachelor degree with 120 credits and 4 year bachelor degree with 160 credits that means each year the student has to earn 40 credits and in each semester the student has to earn 20 credits and when we say in each year 40 credits that means 1200 hours of study in each year because one credit is equivalent to 30 study hours and if it is a 3 years degree program it will be a general uh, program with 120 credits and when it will become a 4 year degree program it will be a honors degree program or a research degree program and very soon many of the universities are working on it to implement the four year degree program and uh, i hope that uh, maybe in a year or two when ugc will come out with the clear cut guidelines now it are these are all uh, guidelines but clear cut guidelines in the form of a regulation or a law uh, to uh, university uh, system or the college uh, education system in the country will have the choice of either three years bachelor's degree or four years bachelor degree program uh i there's another question it has been answered actually for past uh, two three days but sir, they would like to again know what is exactly meant by national credit transfer abc i think see it is not national credit transfer it is national credit framework credit transfer and national credit framework are two separate things national credit framework as i have already explained to you is a credit framework aims at integrating school education starting from the primary level to higher education ending at phd level national credit framework aims at integrating skill education with higher education so school education with higher education skill education with higher education and national credit framework also aims at giving some weightage to the skill experience or the hands on training that people have are so therefore when we talk about a national credit framework which is from level 
starting from class 5 to level 8 which will end at PhD where your level 1 will be class 5, level 2 will be class 8, level 3 will be class 10, level 4 will be class 12, level 4.5 will be undergraduate certificate, level 5 will be undergraduate diploma, 5.5 .5 will be 3 years bachelor degree and 6 will be 4 years bachelor degree, 6.5 will be your 1 year master degree and 7 will be MTech and MCA and 8th level 8 will be your final PhD degree. So it is a national credit framework which is being discussed at the national level by UGC, AICT and NCBET. And if you talk about credit transfer, so credit transfer is from institution to institution based on the NAC accreditation of the institutions and the curriculum. If the curriculum are same under the CBCS system and the accreditation of the institution is A and above, then one can earn credit from one institution and get the certificate uh, for uh, from other institution. That means you can earn some credit from regular mode, you can earn some credit from online mode and you can earn some credit from social science stream, you can earn some credit from science stream. It will all be deposited in the academic bank of credit of the student and finally the student will be awarded the degree, bachelor's degree or master degree by uh, one of these uh, institutions from where the student has earned the credits. So credit can be transferred from one institution to another institution, but all credits will be accumulated in the academic bank of credit of the student. Just uh, there are many questions on how a college can uh, uh, have a multidisciplinary NEP approach when they don't have all the subjects in their colleges. Uh, though this has been answered, but nevertheless, sir, for clarification, I think once again we can tell them that it has to be an integrated approach. Uh, we need not uh, have uh, education in, you know, like we always have that if you uh, take an admission in one college, you have to pass out or it's a system that you pass out from the same colleges, college. But in NEP, we have the option of in fact taking the subject from the college which we feel is more convenient to us or from which we, uh, we would be more uh, benefited, one can take courses from that college also and get the credits. Uh, Dr. Mahapatra kindly just once again explain it because there are number of questions in the same line. See, I completely agree with you that in the present system of education, when education is a part of the concurrent list and uh, that means both the uh, union government and the state government have same power over this. So implementation of multidisciplinary uh, scheme which has been envisaged by the national education policy 2020 will be difficult keeping in mind the ground realities uh, available in the remote and rural areas. So this is the main concern and this is a national concern also. I am not sighing away that it's not a challenge, it's a challenge. Therefore, the national education policy is a vision document. It's a document for the next 20 years. And the policy says that you cannot do it overnight. You have to slowly go for multidisciplinary, holistic, skill-based, value-based, and attitude-based education step by step. As far as multidisciplinary education to be provided by the colleges which are located in remote areas and rural areas, we can say that they, whatever facilities are available in the colleges, the student can earn credits. The student can also earn credit through ODL mode or online mode from these institutions. The student can also join another institution to earn some of the credits. There can be a cluster of institutions in a district and higher education, national education policy 2020 says that in each district by 2030, there will be a multidisciplinary higher educational institution. So that will also come as handy uh, to uh, the institutions which are located at rural and remote areas. 
So overnight it is not going to happen for the rural and remote areas. But there are ways, there are means to achieve this. What is required is our mindset needs to be changed. And once the mindset is changed, once we feel that multidisciplinary holistic skill based education is the need of the hour, then we will find out solutions and we will overcome the obstacles that are coming on our way. Exactly, just like here, Dr. Mahapatra has said, and before we have said, basically, what we have come to a vision of NEP 2020, we were all following it in some of our hands. But they have given us a framework for us all. Before, we were all doing it in our own way. Now, we have a framework for the entire country. And we have a framework for the entire country. And we have a framework for the entire country. We can't do anything. But if we try to do it slowly, it will definitely happen. And it is very challenging. We need to understand it. Every time we have a question, how will this happen? Or what we are thinking is right or not. If we are communicated with each other, and see each other, we can get out of every problem. I am also saying that this is definitely a very specific idea. But one last question, I think. Dr. Mahapatra is, if the university has already announced some skill courses and students are bound to choose one out of these only, will the student be able to earn the credits for skill courses done on Swayam or IGNU or MSME? Yes. This is, this is possible under the credit transfer scheme. If your institution is registered under the ABC, Academic Bank of Credit, then you can easily join the Swayam courses your credits will be transferred and deposited in the academic bank of credit. IGNO is already registered under the ABC. So if you are doing some credits, earning some credits from IGNO, that also is possible. And you can, uh, you can do these skill courses and earn the credit. But first, your institution where you are registered should be registered in the academic bank of credit so that all the credits that you are earning from different institutions are uploaded on your on the uh, portal uh, uh, where your name will be uh, reflected does multidisciplinary approach gives more job opportunities gives much of opportunities yes certainly multidisciplinary education uh, is the need of the hour that's what the national education policy uh, highlights upon and i again reiterate that science, technology, mathematics, engineering, social science, uh, humanities, uh, physical education, art and craft, literature, music, language, agriculture, health related issues, all can be become part of the curriculum. And the choice will be left to the students to choose from this multidisciplinary bouquet of courses and curriculum and they will choose their career path. But we as the teachers will take the responsibility for providing the, the guidance to them about the benefits of holistic multidisciplinary skill-based education. Thank you, Dr. Mahapatra. Thank you for apart Thank from you. telling us about skilling and employability in NEP 2020. You have a lot of uh, teachers who is for teacher and attend karne unke dimaag mein hai so i hope most of the questions have been answered abhi bhi hamare sessions aur baaki hai aur prashno to aap zarur is pe apne dal dijega hum bharsak prayatn karenge ki iska uttar hum de paaye namaskar thank you so much
used. So if you just do a simple mathematics in UGC for a long time and we have been projecting that 180 actual teaching days are mandatory in a year. So that means out of 365 days. more than 8 hours. So the that means one third of a day. So one third and one half will make it one sixth. So that means whole of our infrastructure we are using only for one sixth of the